Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Commissioner Bray. It's great to see you in this setting. I often see Chris, Commissioner Bray doing everything from uh, fighting storms to uh, dealing with utility outages and power outages. So uh, she's using her talents here to work on a cause that I feel very significant, that we all need to have a uh, all hands on deck approach to all my commissioners are fully engaged in working on the crisis of crime in our streets. And I wanna thank her for her leadership and her comments here today. Also wanna acknowledge our commissioner of criminal justice services, uh, someone who had been our secretary of state and is now uh, bringing her passion to solving problems to her job. And that is Rosanna Rosado. And also Jerome Brown, who is our director of snug training. I wanna thank all of you. And I, I want you to know why this is such an important program to me. I was actually very familiar with the SNUG program that was developed in Western New York, Buffalo, where I live. My husband was a federal prosecutor, worked closely uh, with former gang members, people who had been in the streets, all with the purpose of making the streets safer for people to live and recreate and to go to their jobs and take care of their children. So this is an important program because I know that it works. I wanna continue investing in what we know has a track record, a proven track record of accomplishment. So I wanna thank every one of you for, for believing in the cause of SNUG and how significant this is and to use your life's experiences because when we think about the people we're trying to persuade to take a different path, uh, young people in particular, who many grow up in a neighborhood where they don't see a role model that's been successful. They only know the streets from their, their father, perhaps, or older brothers. And, and it becomes a cycle of violence because they don't think they have other options. And people who've been through this, who lived through this, and have conquered this, come through this stronger. I'm so grateful for you to come to this place, be trained, understand that the power you have to change the life of individuals who otherwise could end up continued on the streets, or in jail, in prison, or even worse, to be uh, killed by gun violence themselves. So we know that gun violence is an epidemic at this point. The numbers continue to increase since the pandemic, but it's not just New York State, it's not just New York City, but we're gonna continue focusing in neighborhoods where you'll be deployed. You know, Albany, Buffalo, Hempstead, Mount Vernon, Newburgh, Poughkeepsie, Rochester, Syracuse, Troy, and Yonkers. Let's spread out these programs. And to see that it's not just happening here, but this is the place we're gonna start driving down those crime numbers because behind every statistic is a grieving family, uh, loss of a brother, loss of a sister, loss of a parent. And there's too much grief going on in our society now. We came through a really tough time with the pandemic, two solid years of people being constrained and not having the normal support system. And now a lot of people are taking anger and anxiety out in the streets. And that's why we need you now more than ever. You have lived this, some of you. You understand what the, what the motivators are, what drives someone to make those wrong decisions that can alter their life forever. So I need you to help us to use your skills, mediate conflict, mentor young people, and work with local partners. Show them what success looks like. Show them and tell them your very story because you'll be on the front lines to fight gun violence. And we're all counting on you. But make no mistake, what you're doing today truly sets you apart as a caring individual, someone who's concerned about the future and the lives of others. That is powerful. That is a form of public and community service. And also I want you to know that the state will continue our commitments, not just to support programs like this and to elevate leaders like yourselves, but also in the fall, we announced $8.2 million of investment to bring in more staff so we can bring in uh, more people at 12 existing SNUG sites and that joins over 109 dedicated New Yorkers already, 138 total. We've had nearly 40 hires since last fall. So it's increasing our numbers, which is important, increasing the money toward it, which is important, but also making sure we attract the best. And that's what I'm talking, that's who I'm talking to right now. You're the first class to ever train in this facility. It allows you to experience you know, real life scenarios that you'll face every single day as you're out in the streets. This warehouse is literally a, uh, it's, it replicates a city. And I, I've been out there, I've been to some of the training out there and you're gonna be joined by others. And I want you to know in my state of the state address and my budget address, I talked about this program because I believe in this program. 
And I said, I'll triple the amount of investment that we have already. Let's go to 24 million, nearly $25 million to support this. So let's expand what we're doing already to Utica, Schenectady, and Niagara Falls. So you're part of that army. I need you. I need you to be out there. I need you to bring your talents and your experiences to solving the problems of the streets. And as a result, I guarantee we'll have more guns off the streets. We'll have young, more young people who find a path toward a productive life, be blended into society, get job training, bring up, have their own families and live successfully. And you'll be the ones who made that difference. And that is a profound opportunity that each of us who feel we're called to serve others has. And I wanna thank all of you for what you're willing to do. Uh, as I mentioned, gun violence is high. Uh, we're trying to hit it from different fronts. Just last month, I met with President Biden and our Attorney General at the federal level, Merrick Garland, and we talked about what we can do, You're focusing on keeping people safe and coordinating with people. You know, law enforcement sometimes works in silos. You know, the locals are doing this, the state's doing this, the feds are doing this, the FBI and ATF and others. People all have intelligence. They know what's going on. They know who the players are but they're not sharing the information. So we said in working with the mayor of New York and the mayors across New York state, let's bring it all together, common purpose. No reason to have our own turf battles when we have to be fighting the battles in the streets. So our objective is to use data and analysis, find out where the highest rates of uh, gun violence are, the highest incidence of crime are uh, occurring right now, and to also be deploy people like yourselves to those very neighborhoods. We also talked about how we can keep guns off the streets. In January, I launched the first in the nation consortium on illegal guns. We have representatives in law enforcement from nine states, plus the NYPD, Boston PD, and the federal ATF. Never before have they been brought together toward a common purpose, which is finding the guns and stopping them before they get to our streets. Because 90, I'm sorry, 80% of the guns used in New York they came from another street. They came from another place. They came from another state. So making investments in the human intelligence, information gathering, analysis, and using technology is another way we're going to continue fighting uh, criminal activity. So we're going to be adding even more money to that, $13 more million there, as well as tripling the amount of money toward our state police's gun tracing efforts as well. So we're taking this issue seriously. But when I talk about all these other programs, I in my heart, believe what's going to work the most, most successfully, is with the work you're going to do. The training, the connections you're making, the relationships you're building, the network of support that you'll have from being part of this program, and then going out there where people need you. They need a sign of hope. They need to have faith that they're not gonna have the life that seems to be cut out for them because of the zip code they are born into. No, you're going to offer them a whole new beginning, and for that, and all New Yorkers are grateful for you participating in this training and being willing to be part of our family to help save lives and protect people in our streets. So thank you. I just wanna make sure I don't forget here to, I will not make it through the apocalypse. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Give yourselves a round of applause, because you just heard. I'm Rosanna Rosado. I'm the commissioner of the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services, also known as DCJS. Technically, you all work for me now. That's worth an applause. Yep. <laughs> I am thrilled to be here today at this state-of-the-art facility that you're getting to use. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Bray for welcoming us. This is a big deal, right? This is, for me, this is the beginning of your state career. Um, and so I'm thrilled that you got to use it. And as, um, as Commissioner Bray mentioned, this is the first time, you know, that we're using it. Um, thank you, uh, Commissioner, for your partnership. And I think we intend to come back. When I started at DCJS, just to know, we're all new. I mean, I'm not new to the world, but I'm new, <laughs> I'm new, I'm new to this scope. Uh, when I started in November, I asked our team, why is our street outreach team called SNUG? I got a million answers. I heard many different definitions. They said, well, it's gun spelled backwards uh, because we're reversing the trend of gun violence. I'm like, all right, that's, 
that's, that works. Um, or it means should never use guns. But we've basically just settled on snug. Um, because we feel that no definition is necessary because the power of the work defines the program. The power of the work and the power of those who do the work. Snug street outreach workers and hospital responders are credible messengers. They are from, and many live in, the communities where they work. And some understand what it's like to have justice involvement. Their lived experience and their training prepare them to respond to shootings and promote opportunities for our young adults. They serve as a critical community resource to mentor our youth who are at risk of gun violence. Partnering with these workers and responders are dedicated social workers and case managers who help snug participants, their families, and community members address the trauma caused uh, by exposure to gun violence. And we have someone here from OVS who we need to thank because they actually fund those social workers. So thank you for your partnership as well. We have seen a disturbing rise in gun violence across the country and here in New York since the beginning of the pandemic. And that's why, you know, the governor said, this is an emergency. We don't want to face, you know, a summer under these conditions. So that's why you're here. You're part of that team, not to use a military term, but you're part of the SWAT team. We want to reverse the trend. Oh, I thought she was running to get my attention. Um, so SNUG not only, means to re uh, not only aims to reduce shootings, but to increase opportunity. And that's a big part of your job, right? To increase opportunities for yourself, because we're going to guide you through your trajectory into state service, but also for others, the folks that you are touching. And finally, SNUG programs provide a path to safety for all, for all of us. So now it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of our stars, at DCJS, who is Jerome Brown, who was first hired in 2015 as a part-time violence interrupter with the Buffalo Snug Program. He has been promoted four times, and I think shot once, uh, <laughs> since he joined the program. <laughs> most recently, that's not gonna happen to you. Uh, most recently last summer, uh, when he was named statewide training director. So I welcome with, with much pride, Jerome Brown. Hello everybody, again Jerome Brown, Statewide Training Director for uh, SNUG out of DCJS. And I just came up here basically to give you a little background how I came about to be with SNUG. Uh, like uh, Commissioner said, and thank you again Commissioner, like Commissioner said, I started off in 2015 and uh, prior to uh, becoming a SNUG, I actually was uh, involved in the street life in my younger youth. And I actually did my, my last bid, I just said I needed to change. So I had a cousin who told me about this program and I came volunteered and I just felt that I fit right in because I always felt to be like a protector of people, I always try to take care of people in my neighborhood. Even when I was in uh, the street life, if I found somebody who was doing something bad to somebody else, I would stop them if I didn't think it was justified. So with that being said, I came, I joined the SNUG team I started at the lowest level that you could start at, which was a part-time position as an outreach work, I mean, as, as a uh, violence interrupter. The violence interrupter job was being nested in one neighborhood and making sure of anything, we, we, we call it firefighters because we, a fight to us is like a fire and we try to put out the fire. So I was nested in that neighborhood and if there was a fire or a fight or something, I would have to call my team and we would come try to mediate that conflict. So with hard work and dedication, I was able to, uh, become an outreach worker supervisor. But as many people know from uh, my story that's been shared a lot of time is prior to becoming an outreach worker supervisor, uh, there was an incident where me and one of my coworkers, uh, Daryl Scott, who's here right now, we went to mediate a conflict of a, a, a homicide. And we actually had to work this homicide and work this shooting scene to 4 a.m. in the morning uh, on July 4th. Uh, 2016 and what happened was an individual was murdered outside a barber shop and there was a lot of threats being thrown around and me and Daryl knew that we, was, we had to try to find this individ individual. I'm just seeing the individual the next day and while I was talking to him about um, 
laying low and going in the house, a, a vehicle pulled up and they let off eight shots and I was the individual shot that day while doing this work. I say this to say that it's important that we practice safety, it's important that we, use, we wear our uh, snug uniforms because that day I didn't have on my snug uniform and I didn't follow protocol which was if you're going to engage somebody, make sure you're with a team member. But I just felt the sense of urgency to go speak to this individual. But even with that being said, it didn't deter me from the work. I was back at work within a week and actually was speaking to my team about safety and trying to promote more safety out here in the street. One thing I learned from doing this work is in our community, we don't know where to go for resources. And uh, at that time, I worked for a small agency, a small not-for-profit agency out of Buffalo, and they really didn't have the tools that I needed to help me and my family feel safe from me going back out here in the street. So I reached, the people that did help me was DCJS. DCJS Commissioner back then, Mike Green, and Deputy Commissioner Mike Wood came to see me and my staff in Buffalo, and they sat us down and told us about uh, how appreciat appreciative they was of the work that we'd done, and uh, our snug director, Jeff Clark, actually said, we're gonna make sure you get the assistance you need. So now I wanna thank OVS staff, because OVS made sure that they assisted me and my family and made sure that uh, anything that I felt that was taken from me during, during me being shot, they, they was trying to make me become whole again. And I want to thank OVS for that. But it also made DCJS look at it and say, what about all our, our, own, our other workers across the state? And from the conversation that that came from, we were able to implement the social worker component to our SNUG program. Prior to this work, we had outreach workers out in the street essentially trying to do the work of a, of a social worker. But they didn't have the tools, they didn't have the clinical experience to be able to do that. So by OVS and SNUG working together and DCJS working together, it was able to bring the social worker and a case, a case manager to the fold. And we always say, um, in the absence of violence, you need opportunities and resources. And the social worker was the, that person to bring uh, some of them resources, as well as the case manager. I believe SNUG uh, is a great program because SNUG is actually pouring back in the community with a lot of people uh, left out of the community. SNUG is actually one of the biggest um, workforce development programs I think that, it, that is existing in New York State. We take formerly incarcerated individuals and every, not everybody from SNUG have to be formerly incarcerated. We take coaches, we take pastors, we take teachers, we take somebody as long as, long as you have a relationship with the youth. We're big on relationships with SNUG. And we want to make sure that with this, we recognize that these people have the lived experience that you need to be able to make that connection with the youth today. We send these individuals back in that same neighborhood that they might have tried to get away from, but they know they're going back into this neighborhood with a bigger purpose. Here you go, you got an individual who once was a terror in the streets, now somebody seeing them in the street now helping and mentoring youth. And, and trying to uh, take them from the path that they once lived so they won't have to meet the challenges and, and, and try to get over the hurdles that they once have to get over. They won't have to go to prison, they won't have to go to a graveyard, they won't have to bring uh, these traumatic experiences to their families. So I just want to say that it's been an honor working with SNUG, it's been an honor uh, going through this program and, and actually being able to train all of you guys and actually working with uh, our other trainers across the state. We have six current trainers that's, that's here uh, with us today, and I just want to say thank you, and I want to say thank you to all of our trainees who come, and, and we got a term that we use, it's, pay, it's pow, purpose over paycheck. It's purpose over paycheck because we know we cannot pay you enough to do the work that you do. But we know we, when we got the right people because they put their purpose over the paycheck, and they out here risking their lives to assist everybody. So I just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I want to thank Commissioner Rosado, I want to thank Commissioner for the Department of Homeland Security. I definitely want to thank the governor who was on here, and I want to thank everybody in attendance. And you know how we always end this thing off with snug love, snug love, snug love. Thank you. our program. I think, I think everyone's heading back to training after a quick photo. Am I right? 
All right, so thank you all for being here again. Uh, you, the program is welcome back anytime, uh, and uh, uh, have, a, have a great afternoon. Thanks, everybody.